Hi, welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. I'm going to show you a Witco Blackslin sliding screen, sorry, sliding glass door lock. And this is how it comes when you purchase a lock from us. Reason it doesn't come in one of those fancy bubble display uh, packages from Bunnings is because this is a professional um, trade packed lock. You particularly don't need one of those packages anyway. You've got to use special scissors or a razor blade to get the damn thing open. This lock here is how we sell it. This is for a sliding glass door lock and I'm going to take you through and show you how it is and how you can fit it. So basically when you get it, you just open it up. Comes in this nice brown paper bag. Okay, so the first thing we see here is the outer cylinder. We're going to put that aside. I'll show you how to install that in a minute. Comes with your screw packet as well. So cylinder screw packet right there. And comes with a lock. Now this is a sliding glass door lock, which means that it has the big D handle to pull on on the inside. Has your chrome little lock and unlock. And when you use the key, it overrides it all, which means that you can lock and unlock completely with the key. So there's our lock there. It's falling apart on us. Once again, this is the trade kit. So nice and easy to open. Next layer down, we have the outer handle and we have the striker plate. And the brown paper, well, you can put it on the floor so that when you take your old lock off, you can put it on something and not leave any graphite or grease stains on the customer's floor. It comes with instructions, warranty. Uh, warranty and things like that, you really don't need with a lock like this. It's a good lock, it's a great lock. We use it all day, every day, commercial, professionally. So warranty, I don't think I've ever read through those instructions in my life. 20 years in the industry, I don't think I've ever read through them once because I really haven't had any problems with a lock like this. Installation. Now these particular instructions, they will help a lot of people. First thing I will show you here is your layout. You've got three holes and how they're positioned. They're positioned 41 millimeters apart and they're also done with an eight millimeter hole. Eight millimeter hole, 41 apart, and that will show you where that needs to be. We'll show, show you a few other things. Generally speaking, this particular lock uh, normally bolts on, bolts off, so it's, it's quite quick. One thing is to note is that you can get a plate on the outside if your handle here is protruding too far. You can get a plate and then you will need to do a, like a keyway cutout to allow the cylinder to sit back into the recess of the aluminium frame. This will allow you to have a flush finish on the outside so if you've got sliding screen doors or anything in your way you can do it that way. This part here is an optional extra. You can email us or you can probably find it on our lock shop at drlock.com.au. Now going through this is your keeper. This is where the lock locks into. There's a, a couple of little tricks here I can show you which will give you better strength on your lock and I might as well go through that now. These holes here once you've fitted your keeper using these screws here, you can see them right there, okay, they're like a wood thread uh, but they've got no tip on the end so they're used for aluminium. There's a couple of different sizes, sorry there's two different sizes in there, you've got short and long, reason being is because when you do install this, uh, if we can pull that thing apart, doesn't want to come apart. Normally it does it. Just... No, doesn't want to come apart. All right, so when you install this, you generally put those screws through here and they need to not protrude through the aluminium door. So when your door is sliding, you don't want them protruding too much because they will scratch the edge of the door and your door will be slammed along the side. So when you install this, you would install those screws that I just showed you through this opening here and through this opening here. They also give you a center hole as well. That center hole is not, uh, how you say, oval shaped. By installing the top and the bottom first it allows you to slide this part up and down as needed because you cannot slide the lock up and down. So you would install it in the middle, in the middle, slide it up and down, find your correct position and then you can install the third screw 
which will keep it in that position there. One of the things that we like to do is we like to screw into the door frame as well. And you can use these screw holes here, which are once again oval shaped, to go into the actual door frame. So when you're looking at it from this position, if you can sink some nice wood screws into the door frame, about so deep, it means that when this pressure is put on this way to try and pull or force the door open, it's actually going to hold a lot better. Um, that's completely up to you, these ones here, if you do those. And most, most of the time you just install the one, the two, possibly the third, and that's how it's done. Now, to hold the, this, this is a two part, but it just doesn't want to separate right now. You do a video on it, it doesn't want to play along. All right, so to, to attach one part to the two part, you've actually got some very small screws. Once again, they are metal screws right there. Once you've installed it and you're happy with it, you can screw those in. Keep note that you can actually screw in these ones here which go sideways into whatever you can screw them into. Uh, they can be done at the end. When you do do that, make sure that your hook does not hit any of those screws. So if I was to do that there, you can clearly see that it's above and it's below. This particular uh, striker plate goes into, sorry, this lock goes into this striker plate. It's got two nipples to keep it from going up and down. They're important because when you have those nipples, it stops people from lifting the door from the outside and being able to push this one down. When it's key locked, you won't be able to push this one down, but a lot of people fail to lock it correctly. So if they were to just flick this hook and you didn't have these nipples, you could possibly bounce this back out. So it's important to fit your striker plate correctly and it's important to have this hooking in for maximum maximum depth to give you maximum strength. Looking at the lock like this, that's exactly how it'll be on your door. Flick it up, it's locked. Key lock it, it's deadlocked. Okay, so it's not deadlocked until you actually key lock it. All right, so that's our striker plate. I've showed you how to attach that. I've given you some tips there, uh, trade tips on how to do that. Flicking the lock over. Okay, so your cylinder will just fall out. I'll show you how to fix that later on. This is the plate you mount on the aluminium sliding glass door. So it's got two holes here, one at the top, one at the bottom. They correspond with these on the outside. Now, depending on who you are or where you are, depends on how this particular part is fitted. Some people like to fit it this way, some people like to fit it this way. It makes no difference. You can fit it whichever way you prefer is better for you. And that simply screws straight through on the outside through the aluminium door. Using these screws right here, which are a long metal screw, uh, I think it's M2 or M, yeah, possibly M4. Anyway, it makes no difference. That's the screw right there, which will attach the front part to the back part, going through these positions here, which is one and two. It's actually not that complicated. You've got three holes as we went through on the first bit, one, two, and the third one is for the tail. This is the tail right here. As you can see, one, two, and three. That goes in there. There's grease in there, so I'm not gonna put it in there. Uh, once you do that, once you attach um, the cylinder, oh, sorry, let's go through one more thing before we move on. This cylinder right here, okay. There's a reason there's lines on the back of this. This is because you need to cut it to the particular length, or sorry, width of your door. So what you would do is you would mount this in here and it is always better to have, this is your cylinder here, these are your springs and pins here. It's better to have these at the top, okay? The top being the sky, have this chamber facing towards the sky. That will mean that your pins are in the right direction. If you have it this particular way and people put um, uh, different keys in, you can squash the pins in here and the springs and one day you'll put your key in and it just won't work. Reason being is because the springs are squashed and they won't be able to push upwards. If you do it this way and an unauthorized key is used, gravity will still be able to assist you and your key will work long term better and more reliably. So the best idea is to fit it the right direction. So this would be the top, this would be the bottom. Now when you put it into your housing here, 
bring your housing, you'll see there's a little hole on the side here and it's about a little step down. Now they give you step down bits of metal in this kit. Okay, there's two of them right there for a step down bit of metal and they're used with the uh, black screws which are here. Okay, so I would put that step down there and then I would screw it into there which is a hole suited for that and that what what that would do is that would stop the cylinder from moving backwards and forwards especially when you're pulling a key in and out you don't want the cylinder moving backwards and forwards you want it to be feeling solid and that is how you would install that coming through your door now you would come through your door and you would find where it protrudes about five to five to eight millimeters and then you would cut it off keeping in note that it is recessed into the lock here and it should go not just touching the lock but go deep into that cavity not too far if it goes in too far you're going to find that this is hard to move so you want it to go into that cavity to activate the unlock and lock function from the inside so this is a double sided lock where you can lock and unlock from both sides it's a convenience lock which means that you can lock and unlock from both sides so if somebody locks it from the inside you can unlock it from the outside with the key somebody deadlocks it from the inside you can unlock it from the outside with the key keep in mind that deadlocking means you're using the key you can lock this lock with just by simply hooking it over it's not advisable the best way to lock this lock is by actually key locking it at all times okay so if we've come through the door and we've cut our tail piece we then need to screw our lock body to the door which we do with those screws that I showed you the longest screws in the pack wood th uh, metal thread straight here and here then once we've got this established on the door oh sorry we're, we're skipping a step here internal now those step downs that I just spoke about once again need to be used on this cylinder here click that in Put your, it's not a step down, it's a step up now. Black screw, step up, secure that in that position like that. Okay, once that's secured in that position like that, this little triangle section right here, you can activate the lock. With the key now, lock, unlock. Now when I'm using the key, it's different to just flicking it. If I flick it, I can flick it down. If I use the key, take the key out, this is deadlocked. And that's a very important factor. So by installing that cylinder with that step down means that this won't move around and the lock is installed properly, giving you maximum strength and maximum protection. So we've cut that, we've installed that one factor now to note is that when this is on your door like this it has a phillips head right here and it also has teeth on this cog section right here so if you undo that you can move this backwards and forwards so that you can take the gap out of where this is locking in if you can see right there there's a bit of movement if i wanted to take the gap out i would remove that sorry i would release that screw probably about three or four turns flip this up pull this back meaning that it wouldn't have that movement if it's too much movement or too little movement you can adjust it that way but once again you want once a lock is installed you want it to feel strong but you don't want to do it so tight that you don't allow for movement if the door does not slam in the same spot all the time which is most likely you will need a little bit of movement to give you reliability okay so you would install this piece this piece come over the top with this piece right here your cylinder is in here we've done that uh, step up position then you would come through with the rest of the screws it looks like they've given me extra in this kit this screw right here okay you see this screw this is a metal threaded screw and it's got a bit of a shaft right here this is used right here one and two so it's, it's fairly straightforward it's not as difficult as it seems I've given you a lot of information there I've given you a lot of points uh, a, lot, a lot of things as a professional that we do to install it but you 
most likely will get the gist of it and, and be able to install this quite easily. This is an easy lock. This is for a glass sliding door. This handle as well is not plastic. This is a metal, metal handle. There is plastic on the inside, but this is a die cast housing that goes all the way around the outside. Plastic on the inside, so when you grip it, it's nice and solid and it's also comfortable to grip. Uh, made by Widco, as you can see. Um, quite a good lock use used professionally by all locksmiths out there. I don't think you'll find a locksmith in Australia that doesn't use a Wico lock, um, especially a Blackson sliding door lock. There is other brands out there. Wico Blackson is one of the better ones. It's easier to fit. It goes long and it does exactly what it's meant to do. Now, different sliding glass doors require different type of locks, but this one is for your standard typical sliding glass door lock, where you've got a door of maybe 30 mil, and you've got a frame which is hanging on by you know only a three or four mil flange of aluminium. Putting in these screws here will really increase your security. The screws that hold in through the aluminium are very small. I always tell my uh, customers to put a, a piece of wood behind your door as well. This is a very good lock, but it does not give you um, how do you say crowbar protection it really doesn't because it's only anchored in by these ones here if you're lucky you get the third screw what I like to do is put the fourth and the fifth screw in as well that way when it's pulled in this direction it will hold on that little bit longer which is always desirable I mean they've designed this strike in a particular way where you can put you know as many screws in as possible for maximum strength so you're best off putting them in uh, as for the instructions I don't know if they tell you all that that's really between you and the instructions. This lock is available from drlock.com.au. We don't sell it in the blister pack because blister pack is more for um, supermarkets, hardware stores. It comes in a brown paper bag. It is what it is. It's a great lock and it's um, reasonably easy to install as long as your template is the same as this. And your frame once again is a standard frame. Um, as long as those things are going for you then you shouldn't have any too many troubles and the keying of the lock now it comes with keys these are five pin keys lw4 and what we can do is we can also set it to um, the same as your deadlock if you purchase locks off us and you have let's say a deadbolt a handle lock a padlock and you say look i want a screen door lock or, or a sliding glass door lock as well and i want to purchase them all and i want them all to be the same key that's not a problem for us what we do is we simply just match all the keys to your order so that you can have all of your locks on the same on the same key so you can simply use a key like this to operate all of your locks this uh, particular key right here is one of the most standard keys used in australia and we can also cut you some colored keys or some fancy keys as well so if you purchase locks through us we will key alike as well and we'll make sure that all your products are matching so that you can have one key working your house factory office whatever it is you're putting your locks on and show you videos like this to help you along the way for further information please email please do not call please email we will try our best to answer your questions as quickly as possible and show you as much information as we can thanks for watching and drlock.com.au which is d-r-l-o-c-k forward slash um, store s-t-o-r-e is where you can buy this from thanks a lot